Here we go. Welcome, everybody. What is up? It is your girl, Sarah from Sarah Styles here. Um, joining with a couple other resellers. We are talking about luxury, how to find, authenticate, and resell luxury items. Um, I am a reseller on various different platforms. I also do data analytics. Someone has some feedback, so I'm muting everyone. Um, I think it might be. No, it's not you. Hold on. Sorry. This is what happens when we go live. Yes, it is you guys. Do you have headphones? Glitterwell? I do not have any headphones. I can, yeah. if I mute you, I can't. Yeah, I'll just I'll have turn to mute it So if you try to talk, then make sure to unmute it. <laughs> okay. Otherwise, we're getting some feedback. Or do you have like a phone on or a TV or something in the background? No. No? Okay. No. All right. Sometimes it's just I'm sorry. Um, Hold on, let me. Hi guys, I'm. we're trying to, technical difficulties, sometimes that happens with live. We're trying to get Jody up and going. Um, and oh, hold on, I use StreamYard. Uh, Duncan, I use StreamYard, and so the three little dots means I can put you in a timeout. So depending on how you act tonight, I might have to just put you in a timeout. I don't see a moderator because I'm on StreamYard and not on YouTube. Um, so I have a couple of people, I need to figure out how to make a moderator in YouTube. Okay, let's get started. Sorry, it is a rough go to this live this morning, this afternoon, this evening. <laughs> All right. How is everybody? Welcome. I am a reseller. If you like reseller content, um, data-driven strategies, make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit the notifications because I do a lot of lives. If you are joining us in the chat, make sure to leave. Oh, we lost Jody. Make sure to leave your Instagram handles, your closet names, um, any say, shameless self promotions that you guys have going now. Um, I love to promote everybody as well. And that goes to the guests that we have. Um, you guys definitely leave your notes, your handles in the comments. And then you can also come back when this recording is up after um, and leave your direct links in the comments. Um, and then people can directly link to your Instagram or your closets or wherever you want them to go. Um, let's go ahead and get started. Welcome Duncan, Lovely Lotus is here, Style on Sale. Um, that's new to my channel. So maybe when you guys brought her or him or her over. Um, <laughs> all right, so we are talking today about luxury, how to find luxury, um, how to find it, how to tell if it's real, and then how to resell it. So I have had excess baggage. I've asked excess baggage and glitter well on um, Jody as well, but she's having some technical difficulties. So hopefully she can join us. Um, hold on, let me tell her, texting her right now. Um, Um, so let's, let's introduce everybody so people know, um, definitely follow everybody on Instagram. Glitterwell's page is amazing. Lots of really fun stuff over there. Same with excess baggage. I think Jody might be joining us now, but let's go around, um, introduce yourself, excess baggage. If you would like to tell us a little bit about yourself, what your name is about, how you came up with your name, um, how you got into reselling and what platforms you sell on. So hopefully that's not too many questions. <laughs> <laughs> for uh, one. No, of course. No. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Annette. Um, I'm excess baggage on Instagram. And um, I have kind of been reselling. Uh, I didn't know that's what it was uh, for several years. Um, I had a 10 year career as a handbag designer, um, which kind of ended last year. Um, lots of things like changing in the industry and the economy and all that. And um, and so I had just been like, I had always, I've been an eBay girl since 2004. Um, just like selling random things though, like wasn't going, you know, hardcore. I didn't even know that you could make a living reselling until like last year. Um, and so um, I was familiar with eBay and then like around 2015, I was introduced to Poshmark. And I don't know if you guys remember at that time, it was only women's fashion. Um, and so I started posting bags. I had so many bags from work, from sample sales that I, that I would go to, um, and prototypes that I would get from work from my designs. And so I'm like, I don't need this many bags. So, um, I mean, I think everybody <laughs> needs all the bags. <laughs> I'm telling you, I have a lot of bags. <laughs> 
so um so i just started selling them and at first it was just a way for me to make extra cash and like uh, i used that to pay my school loans and then eventually i paid those off and then you know just was like extra money on the side and then probably like at the end of last year i started being introduced to the reselling community um i found sarah styles i found jack valentine um uh, Nicole State, you know, and I just started learning about it and realizing like, you know, I do this already on the side. Like, could this be something, you know, right. I enjoy doing it. I know. So a are you fashion. So are you full time now? I think. Right? So I am heading towards full time. Yes, that is okay. my goal. Um, right now, it's kind of a weird situation because I was looking for full time work at the beginning of the year and then COVID happened. And now it's just it's like nobody's hiring. There's, you know, nothing going on. And then at the same time, like my reselling was sort of blossoming. And so I don't know, it just kind of is all happening at the right time for me. Um, and so that's kind of where my name is. You asked about my name. So Excess Baggage is literally what got me into this i have so many extra bags that i didn't know what to do with um, if you scroll back to like my early instagram it's literally just all pictures of bags um that i was selling on my poshmark or my ebay oh i'm sure it's like um, and so i love bags i know people people think it's super like glamorous when i tell them that i worked as a as a handbag designer, but, um, you know, just like any other job, like it has its secret pitfalls and, um, yeah, you know, it is way behind cool. the scenes drama. Mm -hmm. It's all. Yes. Bad. Yes. I have so oh many. Oh my God. So, it's amazing. So if yeah. you, if you shop my Poshmark closet, you will find so many, um, rare and unique bags because I often had access to prototypes or showroom samples that never even made it to the stores. So it's funny because sometimes customers will get things and they'll, they'll be like, this is not authentic Cuba. You know, it doesn't have this or it doesn't have that. Oh, because it's like a prototype. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's like a, so it's so, so little, they don't realize they have a super unique piece that no one, you know, never even went to the store. Um, but they think that it's not real. <laughs> so yeah, since we're talking about yeah. 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 We'll have to get into some of that because there's some things that if you get something that's super rare, that how do we tell that it's real? But I'm gonna um, head on over to yeah. Glitterwell. They are, so jo um, Glitterwell and Jody are both local to me. I've met them both at uh, Posh and Sips. They are both, just not both, because there's three of them, but <laughs> their news, they are all amazing people um, and um, talking, <laughs> talking with all of them. I mean, I'm just so touched by all of the amazing people in the community in general, but meeting both of them in person has been um, such a pleasure and delight. So I'm glad that they agreed to come on here and share all of their knowledge. Um, I love looking at their closets and Instagrams because it's like, oh my God, how do you find these amazing things? So I am going to like let her well introduce themselves. Tell us, I love their story. Um, tell us a little bit about their name, how they got into reselling um, and then what platforms they sell on. My name is Tab, and this is Rochelle, and she's going to tell you the whole story of how we got involved with it because she knows it way better than I do because she like dragged me into it. So we'll we'll let it go at that. Glitterwell is just something completely random. It means absolutely nothing except that I love everything that has glitter in it. So that's how we came up with our name. Um, but we started it's reselling so in 2016. It's so messy though. Glitter? Oh, I know. I know. It is. Yeah. But I love anything that sparkles. And, so. and once you touch it, it's like with you your whole life. So it and doesn't I, even matter. And I don't care. I like it everywhere. <laughs> but your kids, I mean, your kids are older. So like maybe it's not as messy as a three and a five year old with glitter, hopefully. Well, my, my youngest is yeah. only nine. So. Yeah. I mean, but that's older than yeah. three. So I'm hoping it's better. That's true. That's true. But yes, I mean, yeah. you're right that like you touch it and it like we had glitter at our old house and I'm like, how are we still finding glitter? It moved yes. houses with us. I think if, if we had like a three or five year old, our name would probably be like Glitter Storm instead of Glitter Well. So it oh, might be a little different. Right. For sure. Yes, that's I threw it all away. It got lost in the move. Um, so yeah, how did you, yeah, how did you, uh, but my five-year-old noticed, she was like, mom, where is it? And I was like, oh yeah, I don't know. What? <laughs> you noticed. Um, so how did you guys get into reselling or how did you drag him into it? 
We were at a barbecue and someone mentioned that they sell their clothes on Poshmark and I had never heard of it before. This was 2016. So we just started selling our kids clothes and um, it went well, you know, we had no idea for maybe the first year that we even needed to share the closet or how to do anything. So we were just, <laughs> you know, making a sale every four or five days, a $5 kids item. And then um, when we moved to Colorado, we went to our first posh and sip and uh, realized that there was something called sourcing. And that is where Tab was introduced. <laughs> and, and then once I was introduced, it became like a challenge for me. So yeah. Once the yeah. once the challenge part of it was introduced, then it's like now I'm unstoppable. So but, yeah, and that was on. November two thousand seventeen. No, I don't remember. It was in the November time a couple of years ago, and that's where we decided um, to up our game and to start sourcing and really change things around a little bit. Become and serious what sellers. I love about your guys' story too is Tab is the sourcer. Um, and then you, Rochelle, you yeah. do all like the listing and pictures and stuff, which is not, I mean, not to be stereotypical, but when you guys told me that I would have thought like the opposite. And so I actually <laughs> love that. And I also love, um, he, you're a police officer as well. That's your daytime or nighttime, I guess. Cause you work. Nighttime at night, job, right? yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. that is your full time, um, job. And then you sort of during the day in my, um, dad is a retired police officer. So when I hear other people, um, especially right now out there, in general, out there keeping us safe, but with everything that's going on right now, I just really commend you, um, both of you, because Michelle, it's gotta be hard to have him out there. Um, it's probably, well. probably harder on her than it is on me, so. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I think you guys are good at like, if you're anything like my dad, you're good at just like pushing it all down. Like everything that happened during the day, you just like push it down and you're like, nope, we're good. <laughs> and go about your business. <laughs> like you have to like separate the two, right? Um, Compartmentalization. So I, yes, and I think for sometimes it is, um, it is easier for men maybe to compartmentalize. Um, but me, I mean, there's women police officers too. We don't have to go down that path. <laughs> but my, <laughs> my dad definitely like, I mean, I still remember stories that he told me about being a police officer that are like dramatic to me. And that was like his everyday life. Um, so let's head on over to Jody. Uh, Jody is also local here. Um, I'll let her introduce herself, but she, I met her at Posh and Sips and she always has the most amazing clothes on and the cutest handbags. Um, and her closet, I mean, go to her closet. It is like, I mean, it's amazing. I just scroll at like drooling. Like, how do you find all of these things? So um, I will let Jody introduce herself a little bit um, and then we will get into the topic at hand. Hey guys, um, I'm Jody, and my inst or my Instagram name is jodes.co.xo, but my posh closet name is at dancingb05. Um, and my story is, I started back in 2016. I had a neighbor who was on it, and she's like, "Oh, it's this site. It's so cool." And I kind of dabbled in it, and then as soon as I started making sales, it was kind of like, "Oh my gosh! Like this site is literally made for me." Um, and so from there, it started out with like $10 sales and $5 sales. And then it was kind of like, I want to up my game um, because I can make a profit on here. And so I started kind of sourcing and listing and listing stuff from my own closet. And so um, everything you see now, I think, is a mix between my personal closet because I'll use things like my handbag until I sell them. Um, but yeah, that's kind of my journey and where I'm at. Um, I think that in the last couple of years, I've really decided to level up and take it to a level of wanting to treat it as a business. Um, it was a hobby and a huge passion, but now I'm bringing it up to be a business. So, and Because you have a daytime job as well, right? So it's still kind of a part-time side hustle for you right yes. now. Um, in July and we want to have babies and my goal is to be able to do my daytime job on the side and posh full-time and mom full-time so that's a lot <laughs> but it is I mean I have three kids and um Rochelle can speak to this I don't remember Annette do you have children I can't remember yeah it is definitely um nice and flexible to have with the kids um, I put in more hours than I do at when I was working in corporate America, but they're the hours that I can work. 
Um, so I can work at eight o'clock at night when the kids go to bed, if I need to, or, you know, we had a rough day today. And so I'm like, I'm taking the afternoon off because clearly my three-year-old needs me. Um, so it's definitely a great thing um, to plan for the future if you guys are wanting to have kids. Um, all right, let's get into it. So I want to start with def defining luxury. Um, and if you guys want to kind of go around and say, I have in my mind what I think luxury is. Um, and I don't know if I'm just making it up or if there's an official title for it um, or definition. So if we can kind of go around and this can be a conversation, anyone who wants to jump in, what is like luxury mean to you um, when you guys are talking about it? Is it, the same, is it the same as like designer and high end? And like, how do we categorize all of that? You know, I think it's really personal um, depending on how you grew up and like what your background is because I used to think that like two and three hundred dollars was a lot of money and if you had asked me 10 years ago I would have said that was luxury <laughs> but yeah. after you know working in the fashion industry um, you know I don't think there's like a set you know rule but I would if I had to take a gander I would say like anything over five hundred dollars um is like getting into the like low low end affordable luxury and then like anything maybe over i would say two thousand dollars then you're in like real luxury world i know That's i know crazy so we're talking retail prices we're not taking talking retail correct prices. correct um, yes yes but still what do you guys think about that would you say that definition 100 yeah, percent. I, I think that's cool yes Oh, go ahead, guys. Sorry. Um, I would say that when I think luxury, I kind of think of it as a lifestyle, um, like an identity, a status, uh, quality. It's so much more than just saying like, oh, that's high end. Because truly, with social media and um, all the avenues for people to sell stuff nowadays, they're truly selling a lifestyle. So you're buying this Louis Vuitton bag but you're also buying the perceived lifestyle that goes with it. Jody, that's, oh, that's, that's so true, especially for handbags. I can't even, like, there should be a whole, like, psychology of handbags class at FIT because that's really what it is. It's showing off your tribe. It's the prestige of having the bag. I mean, Louis Vuitton's famous monogram print, that's printed on coated canvas. Granted, it's probably high-end coated canvas because there's different grades of canvas, but like coated canvas is technically a like not expensive material, but it's yeah. their most famous material. People love it. People want it on everything and it's made them so much money. But why? Because of the logo, because of the prestige, because of the mindset and the, the lifestyle. It. So you're like, you're spot on, in my opinion, on that. Glitter well, do we have anything to add to you guys? No, I think that's true only because like um, it is your, your, it's, it's like this perception of things that, that people want or people can't have. Mm -hmm. So if you're thinking of like a, a, a leather bag and you say, okay, like maybe a coach bag to, to some people that is a luxury bag because Correct. it's, it's, pricey yes. you know but once you yeah. you, you if you're thinking of, of the high end of coach being or maybe an average in coach is five six hundred seven hundred dollars and you can't touch a chanel bag for that so yeah, when you're true. when you're talking yeah, the difference true. between high end and luxury you're talking about something that is attainable for for people and something that people dream about getting you know yeah and also, I mean, and correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm like, I just dabble in luxury and mostly like just knowing about it and like panting over other people's closets and stuff. Um, but it's almost like the top 1%. And they only like Louis Vuitton only makes so many of these bags and all of these like luxury. And that's what makes it more of a status symbol too, because there's only a hundred of these made. And so, you know, if you see a Kardashian carrying it and you also have one, you know that you're one of the few that actually have it. Where Coach is expensive, but they make, and they still only make so many, but it's significantly more than, you know, like a Louis Vuitton or a Chanel or whatever, right? Yeah, I would say statement? exclusivity is definitely a key factor in um, luxury, but also what, what people are willing to pay. I mean, 
it's, you know, I talked to some people who are like, if I won the lottery, I would never buy a $5,000 bag, right? You know, I would still buy regular price things. Um, I always say you don't know till you get there. <laughs> you don't leave her. You know what I mean? No. I don't know. No. Um, but, you know. I, 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 always, I always said that until you, until you actually get something that is that luxury quality because the, the quality is, is there. It's you're not you're not paying just for a name. You there is there is an amount of quality there that is not in other items. Tab, yeah, I have and to I tell you, I, my boyfriend bought me a Louis Vuitton bag last summer for my birthday, and it the quality is exquisite. The workmanship, like especially to my eye, which who've been working with bags for so many years, the the quality, the logo, the way things match up, the stitching, like. It's 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 a work of art, you know. Um, so you're like you're 100 percent right about that. It's just this, you know, truly a level of artistry that you don't see in the more affordable luxury ranks with with us right. lowly people, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, which right? are still much better made than like if you're buying a purse at Target, right? And I think this segues. Nicely, I think Jody's having issues again. Hopefully she comes back because she has some lots of really good knowledge. Um, but I think this kind of segues into our next one is how how do you find it? Like, how do you spot? I mean, mine is like having the Louis Vuitton like symbol, you know, like obviously if you saw the Louis Vuitton uh, um, logo or whatever you would know. But a lot of times with some of these brands, you don't necessarily see those. How, when you guys are out thrifting, because everybody thrifts, right? I mean, I know you guys, yeah, okay. Well, I didn't know, sometimes people like do online arbitrage and stuff, but as far as thrifting goes, when you're out thrifting, what are some kind of key things that you're looking for, feeling for that kind of tip you off um, that it might be something that you want to look into? And then how do you tell that it's you know possibly real? I mean, the, I think the biggest one is quality. And people always say, well, how can you, how do you know what's quality? You know, I, I'm not a designer, I'm not in the industry. And I think the way to develop that is to go to high-end stores, go to the, you know, expensive section of Nordstrom, start touching things, try it on, um, just familiarize yourself because that is really the way that I, when I found expensive things, it's because I looked at it and I said, huh, that looks like real leather, let me touch it. And then I touch it and then I can tell, okay, you know, and then the second thing I would say is construction. Um, and I can say definitely for handbags and shoes, this is super true. Um, I maybe have an advantage just because again, I've, I've been working as a handbag designer, but when I see an expensive construction right away, I check it out. You know, yeah. what are the expensive constructions? Again, this is where you got to go to the store and touch things and look at them and see how they're made, you know, um, Custom. So, like, what are you thinking? Like, I mean, when you're saying, I'm thinking in my mind what I'm looking for. But, like, I mean, can you be specific? Like, when sure. you're saying construction, like, what specifically are you looking at? So, for example, um, if something has very few seams, that means that they only use one pattern piece to make it. So that's more expensive because that means they're going to have more leather wastage. And so um, they're going to have to pay more to manufacture that. Um, if something has uh, custom hardware, is always a tip off on handbags all the time. For the so most meaning part. like their lo meaning their logo is on. So the logo is engraved on. onto yeah. it, but there's a lot of fakes that can engrave the logo on there. So another way to to think about it is um, like an iconic custom piece. And Coach Coach will do this a lot. They'll release collections that have, um, for example, they have that iconic turn lock. Um, I'm sure you you guys have seen it. It was on their um, uh, their like Coach Originals, I think, line um, on some of those pieces. Um, they had a, a bag when I was there that was called like the, um, I think it was something like the Caitlin or something, and it had like a like a wide custom you know like push lock you know you and you'll see it when you look at the stuff on their site you know it. they design things in groups and everything in the group will have that hardware piece and so that's mm -hmm. expensive to make and so like just familiarizing yourself with like what are the expensive techniques 
uh, to make clothing or shoes or bags. That's always a tip off when I'm thrifting. If I see something, you know, with again, with a custom hardware piece or um, a construction that I can tell is more expensive than another. Um, and in and fact, actually, this bag that I have here, this is a coach rogue tote that I personally love. And you can tell it has very few seams on it. And basically, yeah, and the stitching, like if you hold the stitching closer, you like the stitching, this is something I, I do a lot of handbags. Um, and so the stitching on it, every stitch is the same and you're like, none of it's coming right. out. And see how this is a contrast color. That's more expensive to do because if they mess up, like you can tell, you can tell oh, when you punch a hole in leather, it's there forever, you know? So it's very expensive to do things in a contrast um, lining and the way that this is constructed, I can tell is probably just two pattern pieces. It's probably just this front and back piece that folds up to create the side and then the a bottom. Piece in the, yeah. And then I guess oh, these little tabs. Yeah. Tab and Rochelle, I know that you guys, um, do, so she's talking a lot of purses. Um, and I know that you guys do like a lot of clothing and stuff as well. So how are you, are you looking for similar thing? I mean, some leather, but also other things. So like, what kind of fabrics are you looking for? And like, what are you looking for when you're looking at clothing? Um, a, a lot of times you're looking for like silk is a big one for clothing. Um, especially if you're looking, we have a lot of blazers and things like that. So you're looking for 100% wool or cashmere wool blends um, with silk linings, things like that, because luxury brands are going to use luxury materials. They're not going to use uh, poly and uh, viscose and stuff like that as much as as other brands might. So they'll still use them, but yeah. So you're, you're high still end. <laughs> you're high end into luxury um, fabrics. You're looking for silk. You said wool blends, cashmere. Like what? Because that's like if I don't know a brand, I will look at the label and say, what is this made of? So are there mm -hmm. other fabrics? Like you named three. Are there other? Like with polyester, you're like meh. Probably not. Well, um, but you might, I, and even even with polyester, you might say like it's good, but like a um, you know polyester um, would go for less than silk, you know. Yeah. So or even cotton, or even cotton, cotton like linen, we, things we like have that. Stuff um, like Dolce and Gabbana is one of my favorites, and uh, we sell it well. Um, but they're always wool, 100% wool with like a silk lining. We saw one that was cotton and, and left it. And we were like, I can't believe I just left Dolce & Gabbana at the thrift store. If it was my size, I would have bought it for myself. But it just did not sell oh. as well when it's cotton. Yep. The cotton, us, even in the high-end brand, doesn't sell as well. Not for because, us, at least. Yeah, because, yeah. because it, it's just, I mean, you're kind of it's looking at, yeah, at, at like styles and, and how it kind of all fits. So like a cotton um is is not the same as like a wool suit blazer so if you're yeah, looking for like a blazer if you're looking for it is like more you know business oriented or it's more dress up where a like a cotton blazer style is more dressed down mm -hmm. so it just doesn't it doesn't command the same price so. Yeah, and so that's not. Oh, I mean, some of it is fabric, but some of it you're saying is like the style, where like you're looking like a cotton blazer is more like a casual night out, yeah. where a wool blazer okay. would be more of a exactly. Which they, they might both be Dolce and Gabbana, but one oh, might no, be I don't want to more. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> I wanted to make sure I cut you off because there was two of you. Um, so no, it's I all mean, good. That, yeah, so that's a good point. You guys will leave behind luxury or high end brands. Like, because I see something and I'm like, well, that's a great brand. But then now I have stuff in my closet that I'm like, well, it's a good brand, but it's still not selling. <laughs> like, you can't just buy for the label. It takes right? longer. Yeah. It takes a lot yeah. longer it, to sell. High it end. takes a lot longer. I, I've, I think we've found the, the big thing for selling luxury items is that you have to be patient. Mm -hmm. you, you have to kind of, uh, it, it's the long end game that you're playing here because you're looking at the long run and you're saying I, i'm going to get this i'm probably going to up pay for it but i'm going to keep it for you know four or five six months but when i yeah. sell it i will i will make my money back on this and and you have a set price where you're saying okay it's it's worth like a dolce and gabbana if you a blazer brand new if it's twenty five hundred dollars 
I'm, I'm, I'm not going to sell that blazer for $50. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, although you know, we I, have bought them for $50 we bought them. On, uh, on reselling sites, people will sell them for $50 and yes. they're like, Thank you, I guess. <laughs> you know? Oh, so you guys are talking about like doing some online arbitrage, buying it from someone else, and then you guys yeah. sell it? I mean, we, 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 we source, we source mean, some different. We've, we've definitely had to kind of change our game here with not with the thrift stores all closing yeah. and everything like that. So we still need yeah. to find things. But uh, yeah. I mean, whether it's going through Poshmark or Mercari or eBay or any of those sites, like if you, you do a search and you find it, there's somebody who has those those items out there. And, yeah. and either they don't know the value of it or they maybe got it for really cheap. So they're like, Hey, if, if I can buy it for $5 that I got from wherever and sell it for $50 or a hundred dollars and make as much money as they wanted to make out of it, then they're happy. But if we, if they sell it for $50 and they're happy with that and we buy it for $50 and sell it for and $350. Everyone's happy. Yeah. Then yeah. It, it's kind of a win-win for everybody in that one. Yeah. yeah and I think you so, hit the nail on the head too, when you said it's a long game with doing luxury. Um, and I know I've talked with Jody, hopefully we can hear and everything is good. Um, I've talked with Jody at some partnerships about this too, that you have to kind of hold out for that right buyer. Um, and I talk a lot on my YouTube, typically speaking, the higher your average sale price, the longer your days on hand, because you have to find someone who is going to want to spend the money and that it's going to, I mean, if you're talking clothes, that it's going to fit. Like if someone's going to pay $20 and be like, okay, hopefully this fits me. And if it doesn't, whatever. But when you're spending $350, you're finding that one unique customer. Um, so you are playing a long yeah. game. So Jody, can you hear us now? I can hear you. Yay, we can hear you. Okay, good. I'm sure you have lots to share. So we are, I don't remember how much you missed, but we talked about, oh, you added to the luxury, um, but talking about what you're looking for when you're finding it. So when you're out thrifting, what are you looking for um, to say, hey, this is probably a luxury piece if it's not like some of the brands, you know, like the Louis Vuitton and like Burberry, you know, the brands that everybody knows, but you're like, okay, this could be something like, what are you specifically looking for to tell that it would be kind of a higher end luxury brand? Sure. So I'm looking at quality stitching. Um, I am pretty familiar now with a lot of luxury brands, but when I did my biggest downfall was like, Ooh, this feels nice. I'll buy it now and research it later. Now I'm to the point where I'm feeling, I'm looking at the the label, the stitching, and then I'm researching while I'm there. So that yeah. way I'm not bringing home a bunch of stuff that is just going to sit in my inventory. Um, I sell less clothing, like luxury clothing, than I do handbags. Um, I kind of, my secret or my business model is to line my closet with like lesser items or items that I know will go faster and then really focus on waiting for that right buyer for my handbags. Um, I've only found a couple pieces out in the wild. Um, I do most of my sourcing online and um, I feel like it's safer because when you're in the moment and you're looking at stuff out in the wild, um, you're not as careful. That's not to say I found some great pieces, but um, I just, I like the security sometimes of, of sourcing online for my handbags. Yeah. And so this kind of brings us into my next question, um, because I've looked with everything that's happening. I've looked to start sourcing online as well, too. And I find authenticating it online to be much harder for me. Um, and maybe I'm just not as secure in it, but like I know coach pretty well. And as long as they show me a creed and I feel like coach, I could do. But some other things, unless I feel it, I'm like, I not positive <laughs> like so what are some tips that you have when you are because a lot of us are sourcing online our thrift stores in Colorado have opened up um but the inventory from what I've heard is not great and um I, not everyone is comfortable going out and so I think there still is probably a lot of sourcing online happening so what are some tips for sourcing online to know that it's real um because not everyone is going to have like an authentication certification in fact, I'm finding very few to actually do. If it seems too good to be true, yeah. it probably is too good to be true. Yes, right. And go. that's my philosophy too. But then I can't make any money because all of the things that seem like aren't too good to be true are the price that I would be selling it for. 
So like, how do I mean, how do you find things? Cause I'm with you and that's where I'm at. I'm like, there's no way this is a real Prada boot for $10. Like, right. Well, we do well, a lot of research too on um, like just Google searching, watching videos on how to authenticate uh, Louis Vuittons or, or Gucci or whatever. And it, it, they go into a lot of detail. Lots of the times they'll talk about the sheen on the Gucci um, canvas or leather or the print, um, the hardware, you know, um, they go into a lot of detail. So we found that we can find a lot of information just from watching free videos uh, the real real actually puts out lots of videos um and i oh, trust really? them because i know that they're real yeah. um you yeah. know professional yeah. authenticators i think part of that too is is looking at it and and thinking this again with the the long game type attitude on this is that you're probably not going to find a louis vuitton bag online for ten dollars that you're going to be able to sell for a thousand dollars yes right you're, so, you're, yeah. you're, yeah, yeah, I mean, you're still going to look at something and say, okay, I'm going to pay up for it. And especially if you're going online, you're going to you're going to really pay up for it. So it, it, at that point, you're kind of planning in your head like, okay, well, maybe if I buy whatever this bag for six or seven hundred dollars and I sell it for a thousand dollars and they, you know, depending on which uh, which app you're going to use or where you sell it at, they take out certain fees or whatever. So if you're thinking at the end of the day that you're going to make a hundred dollars or two hundred dollars off of this then that becomes worth it you're not trying to to buy something at the super super low cost and sell it and make a thousand dollars every single time it's you're still planning if you can make one or two hundred dollars every time and that's we don't sell a lot of bags so that's that's not really that's not our game so which i appreciate that because we source at some of the same stores so I appreciate we'll leave the bags for you. Yeah. We'll leave the bags. The <laughs> only the only bags that I can really Oh go ahead. The, the only bags I can really do are, are Louis Vuitton. Everything else is kind of a crapshoot for me. So Yeah, well I I we and what's funny is we actually were both at randomly at a store together um and we're trying to figure out if this Louis Vuitton was fake. Um which was kind of funny. And it was, unfortunately, it yeah. was fake. Yeah. Um, but we were both sitting there looking at it like, I don't know, it was a, I mean, it was a reasonable <laughs> fake. It wasn't the one that you looked at and was like, okay, come on, like that's straight from Canal Street. Yeah, I know. <laughs> like, come on, hours. like you misspelled it. Like, come on. Yeah, we spent yeah, hours, right. so like two, two hours at the thrift store trying to authenticate something, like Jody said earlier, rather than paying for it and getting home and finding out that you're now stuck with yep. a fake, so. We'll yeah. spend lots of time yeah. but, if, if we think it's real. And I'll say with that, part of like authenticating it kind of yourself when you're in the store, is it like a luxury brand? They they don't have mistakes. So if you're looking at it and you're thinking like, oh, well, this, you know, maybe they just didn't put this stitch in right. Or maybe this, you know, maybe it just, it, no, they, they don't make mistakes. So if you see one and the color's off or the stitch is off or something's off, 99% of the time, it's a fake. Yes, right. Because the ones that do make mistakes, they don't sell. I mean, they yeah. like they don't sell those. That is, and that is part of what you're paying for in the price. Um, and Erica did come on late, so we will just quickly address this. Um, if you want to head over and watch the beginning of this, we go a little bit more into depth. But she said, "Sorry if this has already been addressed. What are the, your standards as far as quality? How do you decide how to price an imperfect item?" Um, and so I think they don't make mistakes, but sometimes you will find an item that has a scratch on it or, you know, that is not a manufacturer's flaw, but, you know, a human flaw as someone who has worn it or whatever. Um, so kind of what is your guys's playing field on, is it worth putting the money and reselling if it, if it's not perfect? I mean, I think you can easily go onto eBay or Poshmark, and I do this all the time, and check the solds and see what is it selling for brand new, and what is it selling for used, and what is it selling for in like very used condition. And right there, you can start to gauge based on your item and the imperfection. How imperfect is it? Is it just a tiny little spot on the back? Maybe you can still get pretty decent money on it um, if you know, the interior is totally gross. And this happened to me recently. I found a, a Miu Miu suede bag for $4 at the Salvation Army. <laughs> but when I opened it up, the interior had this like weird residue around the zipper. And I'm like, oh my God, no one's ever going to buy this. I'll just keep it. 
But for four dollars, I think I probably would have taken that risk. For $4, you know, what? No, I, I did try to sell it on eBay for like I think I had it at auction for just like fifty dollars. Yeah, no bites, nothing. nothing. So you know, sometimes they are too far gone for people to take a chance. You just have to kind of like do your comp research and check sold. That's really like the most valuable, I think, um, information. Right? What would you say, Glitterwell? Um. I think you're right. I think that the important point that you brought up was that it depends on what the flaw is. Mm -hmm. If you're talking about a Louis Vuitton bag that has a, a hole punch through the outside of it, you know, there's probably not a lot of people that are going to want to pay for that because the people that are, especially for luxury things, they're looking for it as a status item and they don't want something Bingo. that looks like, yeah, you know, like, hey, look at my sweet Chanel bag that has you know, one of the straps falling off and I sewed it on myself. They don't, they don't want that. They want it to look like, you know, this luxury item. But and well, so that's a valid point. point. Yeah. So do you not get as many flawed items for luxury as you would for something else? Um, depends. I, I think it, it, it depends on what the luxury, on, on what the, what the item is and what the flaw is. Yeah. Because like, like yeah. if, if I'm and getting the brand, a brand, I think, and the, the brand. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I personally feel like someone might buy a Chanel bag that has a missing or the strap that's broken because it's such a high end luxury bag. They're going to be like, oh, my God, this is a four thousand dollar bag that you're willing to sell me for five hundred dollars and take it to the Chanel store and they'll fix it for you. And oh, people true. will know that Chanel and Louis Vuitton stand we'll behind their bags. products and they will fix it for the most part. They'll fix it for you sometimes even for free. So I feel like the the really high end brands like Louis Vuitton and uh, and Chanel will sell better, even though they're flawed. And this maybe yes. there's a hole in the side of it or something really yeah. out there. But for the not most part, we, not, yeah. we, we try to avoid things with flaws, yeah. like shoes. If they're if they're tore up at the heel, just it's not because worth it. Part us. part of it is that it's there's probably a buyer for it, and you would you you know you'd probably be able to sell it. But some of it's just what you want your your closet to come across as. You know, yeah, so. and I think with flaws in general too, even if you disclose every single thing, I think you're opening yourself up for a little bit more of a lower rating or mm -hmm. depending on what platform you sell, of returning it if you don't have that high standard of quality, even if you disclose, I mean, absolutely disclose everything. If you're watching this and you're new and you yes. want to sell it, absolutely yes. disclose everything. Please. But even Please. then, you um, even if you disclose it, people, I mean, I've had people that are like, well, it's worse than they said. And I'm like, <laughs> I mean, I disclosed it. I put a picture. Like, I don't know how much else you can do. Um, so really, yeah. like you said, the quality of your closet, um, especially with the higher end things, like people are wanting that status symbol for sure. Do you guys ever get things, um, cause there's like services, right? If you're not sure, have you ever used a service to see if it's, um, authentic? Mm -hmm. Yes. Who is real authentication? Is that what the name of the website yep. is? Real authentication. So That's I, have, I have not had to use one of those services. Um, and I recently heard, um, Issa from global collective that is like a luxury reselling. That's like her business. She, um spoke on this topic and she said that you know if you're new and you're unsure it might be a good idea to do like one of those services but just remember that that certificate doesn't mean anything to chanel doesn't mean anything to louis vuitton you know if you want to do it because you're new or because you want that peace of mind you know go for it but that that technically you know at the end of the day it doesn't mean anything so that right. kind of stuck in my mind when she said that because it's kind of true. And, you know, so just be careful. Like, you know, if you're going to do it, make sure you do it because you have like a good feeling that it's probably real. <laughs> well, we, 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 I mean, um, we, we actually did that in reverse. We, we did it because we had a good feeling that it might be fake and we just wanted to to like make sure that we were good. Cause we yeah. don't want to sell anything yeah. that's not real. Yeah. So uh, we had a pair of Chanel shoes that don't have a serial number. And I was just really nervous. They're 
beautiful shoes, everything about the craftsmanship and the quality was really there, but they didn't have the foil stamp on the inside like normal Chanel would. And so anyway, we did it just to make sure that for our own peace of mind that we were selling something authentic because apparently there's a time frame where Chanel did not stamp their shoes. Yeah. And, um, so, um, and it's, and that's it's, where it's hard. It's Sorry, go ahead. You go ahead. Uh, well, I think that's where you get, like there's certain things that you can look for online and most of the time it happens, but then there's like, well, there was a two year window and is this <laughs> yeah. item in that? And so it, and I do want to point out these services cost money. Um, and so yeah. if it's not real, then you paid up for it. Right. Um, but if it is real, then, you know, it's more of a peace of mind. It doesn't necessarily mean anything, but it's more peace mm -hmm. of mind because websites or um, platforms will shut you down. If you're selling fake items, most of them give yes. you, yes. uh, you know, slap on the hand. Um, but if it happens to be a habit that you're doing, um, you will get shut yeah. down. And then it also looks like bad business. Right. So I, exactly. I mean, I think that's what I think is fair selling something that's fake that we don't realize is not authentic. Be so. Because it, it is easy to, I mean, there's so many, especially with luxury brands because they're, they're so desired that there's the, I mean, that's, that's what, the the people who are making fake anything start pumping that stuff out because that's that's what they think everybody wants so you can watch video after video on how to authenticate gucci or chanel or i, I watched a half hour video on just how to authenticate hermes ties it's just ties and it's still like at the end of the day they're like okay well this is what it normally is but you know, vintage doesn't have it. The new things have changed and this is different. So there's this little thing in here and you're like, well, how do I, you know, if you're buying it. So basically I just watched, it. yeah, I just watched yeah, a half an hour for you to tell me it doesn't even matter. <laughs> like, yeah. That, half an hour to say, well, it still may or may not be depending on, you know, like whatever, however many checkpoints they have that say, you know, these are the 15 things to look for. And you're like, well, okay, well, 12 of the things that were on here are good. And three of them are, maybe questionable so is it good or is it not so you're still you're still in that that's thing to uh, access baggage's point is familiarizing yourselves with the yes. brands going to the stores yeah yes. i think i could just go to louis vuitton just to go look at their bags it's yeah. super fun for me so. but does louis vuitton like like you like like i've never been in one well i've seen but like they're all like showcase like they'll just let you like just wander around and like let me look at all yeah. these you know what, sarah you will be fine because you're so like engaging and, and bubbly and extroverted that you will chat up the sales associate i'm sure here's the thing you <laughs> see my youtube personality um and tab and rochelle have seen me in in the wild where i'm not nearly as like outgoing as bubbly wild. as i am on youtube oh. but even for posh and sips i have to like i'm normally like very quiet and shy but on youtube like one you have to be outgoing because like no one wants to watch you know the charlie brown teacher um but two <laughs> it's much easier because i'm like in a room by myself once you get around people and like louis vuitton store i would be so like I would be so anxious and like they're gonna know that I'm a fake and I cannot afford one of these. Like they're gonna know I'm just looking because I want to resell it. Like But you know like what though? They're not like, gonna no. care. Yeah, they're not gonna care no. because they're gonna say you have you have an interest. So even if you can't afford it now, if at any point in your life you can afford it. They're going to be super nice to you because you might come in yes. and buy that bag from them. Yes. And that's how that's luxury different. works. Yeah. I've done that at the coach store because coach, I'm like, man, whatever. Um, but even coach bags, I would never buy new. Like that just boggles my mind. Um, but I coach and I went, you know, I was like, well, and what happens here? And what, like, I was asking all the questions and the lady just sat there and like told me coach's whole life story. Um, so maybe I will go into some of I the mean, higher need to be there and they're probably bored so <laughs> you know like yeah. talk to them and try yeah. things on and touch it because that's how you're really going to learn like what is the quality and i think also keep in mind just circling back to what you guys were saying before that reselling is technically relatively new like in the history of everything like yeah. reselling yeah. is so like when design houses are making these things like they were never designed for this kind of secondhand economy that's sort of like burgeoning right now. Like, you know, people would just buy things and that's it and you'd never see it again. And maybe they gift it to somebody and who knows, you know, 
Um, but now, I, and I think this is something that we're going to see in the future. It hasn't happened yet, but I think brands are going to start to catch on to this whole secondhand economy and start m connecting the dots that like if they make something and it has a high reselling value, well, wow, that that we're doing something right, you know, and mm -hmm. let's make sure that we provide model photos you know, to the public so that when they resell our items, they do it right. And, and, and it's correct. Um, it hasn't happened yet, but I think it's going to happen with the whole like internet of things that's developing right now. And I think in the but future, think Oh, go ahead. I think in the future, when you buy something, you're going to get maybe like some kind of a digital ID with it. And like all the information about that item will be stored in it. You'll have pictures of it, of what it's supposed to look like. And so it's going to totally change the way that we trade on the secondhand market. But do you think that they will buy like these luxury brands are going to buy into making it? better to for the reselling market or taking it away because i know louis vuitton like they will take back their bags and burn them so i've heard i don't i mean yeah. rumor, maybe i'm making that up <laughs> but they don't like it in the second hand market because it devalues them so do you think luxury will go feed into that or they will steer away from that even more and make it even harder because they it once <laughs> it's been sold on you know second hand then that's devaluing it because more people have it right? okay well um, one i think exclusivity is going to be key again right they may decide we're only making 50 of these and then two um i i think they will because sustainability is it's it's passing it's like cool kid phase to the point I, where it's I, like I, we need to embrace this like we we cannot afford to continue to waste resources and you know ruin the planet and stuff like that and so it's gonna i think it's gonna have to happen for them because they don't it's want to be associated yeah yeah they're definitely, and the gen y are definitely there Tab, what I, were you gonna say i i think that they're gonna get smart and they're going to start having trade-in programs so that you can bring your louis bag in uh you buy it and then next year and you bring it in and you upgrade, you know, for a couple hundred bucks, you upgrade to the next model, but you sell your old bag back to them and they give you, you know, whatever, half the value oh my God. of it. It's like a million dollar it. idea right there. Yeah. And I think you're, you're probably right there because a lot of the big corporations are getting in. They're seeing the second hand market and they're getting in yeah. on that as well. So the luxury brands might start yeah. doing that too. Some, some have already started, like you said. So yeah. I think this is just a matter of time before they see like, if I can sell you a bag today for fifteen hundred dollars, you come back to you know next year and you pay um, you know five hundred dollars to get the upgraded this year bag, you know, but you sell your bag back to us for you know whatever say yeah because, because yeah. Why, why should the real rail profit off of their designs over and over and over again? Exactly. Why should eBay yeah. profit on their designs over it's, and over again? It, no, if they it's just a matter smart. of time before they start doing it themselves. Oh my gosh. I hope yeah, no one they can listening. <laughs> yeah, don't they can authenticate their own stuff. <laughs> yeah, because they authenticate yeah, their own stuff because they made it. You know, and then people I'm will like, be like people are gonna buy from them and be like, Well, anything on eBay, I don't know that it's real. Yeah. I know it's and then, real. And then you talk about like you talk about like a trusted seller because now you're going into the Louis Vuitton store and you're saying, Hey. I can't afford this new bag, but look over here in the used section, you yeah. know, where they have these yeah. refurbished bags that are probably like new because they're not going to sell things that are cracked and straps well, falling tell, off or anything. Don't tell anyone. Nice ones. I won't. Yeah. It's just here. Okay. So Erica Stokes is saying, what kind of profit margin are you looking for when you're sourcing? How do you decide when something is cheap enough to buy, take the time to list, resell and have it worth your while? And I want to talk specific to luxury because I was noticing, and I'm the same way and you guys all kind of mimic this luxury is going to take longer. And typically speaking, unless you randomly come across something at the bins, typically speaking, you're going to pay up for it. Um, however you source, most thrift stores are on to most luxury brands and don't usually let it slip through. Um, unless you're, I found a couple of things at the bins, but it's not, it's very rare for that to happen. Um, so you're paying up and it's the long game. So what is your guys's kind of margin that you're looking for? It tells you, okay, this is worth me paying. If you're willing to share numbers or you can do percent, whatever information you guys are willing to share. I know not everyone likes to share their numbers. 
So I think, again, this is pretty unique to a person's situation, how much money they can afford to invest up front on an yeah. item, what the cost is that they're considering. And I think here's where doing your comp research is really, really important because the number one thing you want to make sure is that whatever you're buying it for, you can resell it for more. Typically, I like to double my money and then probably triple it, I would say, like that at a, at a minimum. You know, and I try to honestly, I try to do this with all of the things that I sell, especially on Poshmark, which has such a high uh, fee at 20 percent. You know, I, I this is a hot topic for me because there's a lot of resellers out there that they love to sell 10 and five dollar items on their Poshmark closet. And yeah, maybe somebody bundles, you know, 50 items. But how long did it take you to photograph and list? The same and amount of time as that. And clean. Yeah. yeah. And I, I'm not about that. I'm about the, you know, smart, efficient use of my time. I, I'm not on Poshmark to be selling $10 items. I'm just not. Yeah. I, and, there is, and I am going to point out there is very different because I talk about this a lot on my YouTube. There's a lot of different strategies at work and yeah. the, 10, the $10 items depending on what you get. But in general, the $10 items are going to sell quicker. Um, so you're going to make that capital back a lot quicker where you have a higher average sale price item. It is a longer game. So it kind of depends on your business strategy and do yes. you need money right now to pay rent um, or are you, can you wait a couple months Right to um, and listen. I'm not saying there's a wrong way to do it. You can absolutely be successful selling ten dollar items on Poshmark yeah, if right. that's your jam. It's not my jam. I I'm more in it for the long haul. I like quality pieces, mm -hmm. and um, I like to make at least twenty or more in profit on an item. That's yeah. just me. I that's what I feel is worth my twenty time or right more now. dollar. Twenty yes. or more dollar profit. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know. Yes. So whatever we're talking percent. Yeah. Whatever I paid. <laughs> And then a $20 profit on top of that. If I can, you know, when it comes to luxury items, I like to triple my money or more, you know, we'll see. And it then again, it, it, it depends, it depends on what I'm paying for that item. And I really, I can't stress enough how important it is to do your research and do your comps, check the sold on an item, because even if you look up to see how much something is selling, it may be selling for five to six hundred dollars but when you look at the solds actually it's only selling at two to three hundred dollars so and this is something that we talked about this earlier and i wrote it down i wanted to come back to it looking at um sell through rates as well um completely is an app that i use to look at sell through rates because just because there's an item that sold for six hundred dollars if the sell through rate is one percent there's 500 other items sitting out there that are not selling so it yeah. may not be worth spending paying up for it because yes. looking at your comps is good but also looking at if the items are selling tab um rochelle what do you guys have to say about that what is kind of your um level of you'll pay up um, I and I'm sorry. Were you going to go ahead? I was going to say that it's probably two different questions for us mm -hmm. because I look at it one way when I'm sourcing, and since she does all the pictures and then she does the actual pricing and all that thing, I I think she looks at it a different way. Except so that I'll we are we are both on the same page when it comes to what we'll pay up for. Like we will 100% yes. pay up for Chanel and Louis Vuitton. In those cases, we're we're looking to make no less than $200, and that would be on the lower end of what we're hoping for. If we're gonna spend $300 for something, you know, it, it's gotta be worth the time um, for, I don't know, maybe like Armani or something that's still really nice. Um, I would think maybe a hundred dollars would be, but um, for me, at least, I think it's more of the brand. I've, after doing this for a while, we just kind of think, okay, if I spend this much on this Armani jacket and I can sell it for anywhere between 100 and 150, I'm still making 80 to $100. And that's, and that's, that's exactly. the ballpark that that's we want to be in. Yeah. And I think something in selling luxury is you kind of have to, or high end, whatever label you want to put on what you pick out. But you have to change your mindset because you are likely going to have to pay up. And it's kind of like, oh my God, I just spent $50 on this item. But if you're making $80, $200 on it, like that is crazy margins where if you spend a dollar at something at the bins, but you're only making $10 on it, but there is a different strategy for everybody. And in order to do kind of this game, I think you, you, I don't think you have to have the capital to do it. You have to be able to willing to spend the 50, 200, 500, whatever it is 
to sit yeah. on it for a while. It can't be, and there's nothing wrong with either strategy, right? No. but you have to look at your business model and be willing to say, okay, I am buying this, I'm spending $200 on it, and I know that it's going to sit for six months to a year, but boom, I'm going to make $400 on it. Yeah. Um, when yes, I but shop- that's where our Oh, sorry. Go, oh, ahead. go ahead. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say that's where our bread and butter brands come in. They yeah. keep us supplied in the money to allow us to buy, you know, to spend up for the the luxury items because yeah. our closet is very diverse. I mean, we do have luxury, but we also have, you know, twelve dollar Fabletics, you know, or whatever. Just yeah. because, you yeah. know, we want to appeal to all different levels of, yeah. of buyers. But when it comes to the luxury, you have to have the capital. So that's where we you know, depend on our bread and butter brands. Yeah. And I can say something to that. Bernardo. Oh, I shop based off of average sale price. Um, so I am willing to pay off if I pay up. I, I consider when I look up a comp, I say, okay, this is how much it costs me. This is what the comp is. I take out what I'm going to pay. I take out the fees and I just do 20% because it's roughly that on all platforms. And then this is how much I am in general going to make. Is that the average sale price that I want to go for or more obviously i will take more um but i aim for an average oh, price okay. in, oh what is that sorry <laughs> the time. rabbits are like, the rabbits like are doing something like crazy over here yeah, yeah well like it might, time home. might have been what he was doing so <laughs> yeah oh and there was that was the other thing i was gonna say there are certain times that i will go below that average sale price if it's going to bring traffic to my closet, if it's a brand that I'm like, okay, I'm not going to make a zillion dollars off of this, but it will bring traffic to my closet because it is something that people are looking for. And then maybe they'll bundle or like, or they'll see something else, you know? So sometimes it's like a, it's bringing different traffic to my closet than some of the other brands. Like I'm, I'm paying for the brand to get people in my closet. Yeah, I totally agree. And I, I use that strategy as well. I have all different price points and, I tend to even, my sharing strategy is to share my higher end items or my more highly searched items, you know, like Madewell or Anthropology and things that mm -hmm. um, will we'll get a lot of eyes on them and then have that, the traffic into my closet, um, you know, for other things that people might not know that they need. <laughs> they have to have. All right, we are approaching. We are approaching that hour, and I feel like we could probably all talk for another hour or two on this subject. Um, but I do want to be cognizant of everyone's time. So, if there are questions in the comments, um, if people watching have questions, I want to make sure to give time for that. So, if you have any more questions, leave them in the comments, and then I'm going to wrap it up with what brands and type of items do you guys see the most counterfeits at? Um, and this is probably a long laundry list, but like maybe your top five, um, you know, like a Louis Vuitton handbag is probably pretty high up there, right? Like what is like a really, um, something that is, if you see it, it's likely going to be a counter. Like there's a lot of counterfeits where if you see something else, you're like, well, no one counterfeits, uh, I don't know, I can't think of something, but do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like sometimes you're like, no one counterfeits this. Is yep. Yeah, Louis Vuitton um, bag. I would say Goyard, but Louboutin shoes. Yeah, Louboutin shoes. Christian Louboutin shoes. Yeah, those are sure. And Chanel. 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 And yeah. all of their. So our, I did. Oh, would you, you say me. all of their stuff is counterfeit? It's or just more because I feel like I feel like a lot of shoes and bags, not so much the clothes. Or am I making that up? Yes, no, I'm making that I, I up. Or yes, that's true. No. <laughs> no, I think it's I think it's true. I think it's true because uh, the the clothing I think is not that it's harder. I think it's just that there, there's not as much time spent in it. Well, I and think. no one knows unless the pattern's on the outside of your blazer or your jacket. No one's going to know knows. what it is. Where the Louis Vuitton bag, you're carrying it. Everyone can see it. So yes. I believe that they do probably rip off clothes and you know accessories just as much as they do yes. bags and shoes. But um, in our experience, we come across that less than we have bags and shoes for sure. When it yes. comes to and especially, unless it's, and especially like you said, unless it's like a shirt that has like the big Louis Vuitton logo on it, then you're like, okay, like yeah. that's probably fake. But if it's just like a nice wool blazer, you're like, well, who would fake this because no one knows that it's a nice wool blazer? Unless it's like something, a style that celebrities, like if it's a big style that celebrities are wearing right now, um, mm -hmm. kind of think yeah. of one. But you know what I mean? Like sometimes there's like, oh, this is like the new hot dress. And then you'll see like replicas yeah. of that. Yeah. Right. And, you, and you still, you'll still find it anyway, just because I, I know there's some with like coats where they have like the, uh, 
um, like Canada Goose and the Montclair coats where they have like the patch on the shoulder and people will do like iron on patches with those just to, just to not, and, and, real quick tip they're not ironing them on if you find out no, they're not they are not they're not and and, and that's, that's the kind that's of stuff that's yeah. yep. so true um well so i think that no one else had questions i do want to i am all about shameless self-promotion so if you guys have definitely follow both of them on and jody as well i'm so sorry her um phone or computer wasn't working. She has so much insight. So help, hopefully I can have her back on. But all of their Instagrams are absolutely amazing. Their closets are great too. So follow them. Um, Glitterwell, Annette, Rochelle, like your guys' names are up there and then you're in. Everybody come back when the recording will go up as soon as we're done. That's a lie. It usually takes a couple of minutes to process. But if you guys want to cut, if you guys want to come back and leave your direct links for your closet or your Instagram or whatever you want, definitely feel free to do that so people can um, follow you there. I really appreciate your time and knowledge on this, and I know all of my followers do as well. Um, so if there's any last words that you guys have, or if you're having a sale or any promotions that you guys want to do a shout out before we end the call, um, I. You, you can find me I would on Instagram. I have a link in my bio to all of my different shops if you're curious or you want to see what I'm selling. Um, and I do post um, pretty regularly on my Instagram. And I, I also do a lot of I, IGTV um, little like videos which have like tips and tricks and things that I'm learning myself. So um, I, if you're new and you want to come learn about reselling, um, check out my channel on in Instagram. Awesome. And I do actually want to ask, um, I don't want to offer this service up if you guys aren't willing, but if people have questions and they're like, hey, I think this might be real or fake, are you okay if people DM you and kind of chat back and forth? Sure, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I figured the answer was yes, but I didn't want to offer <laughs> yeah. it um, if you guys weren't. And I mean, you can't always authenticate over the phone, but there's there, I have a couple of people that like just chatting back and forth, like, hey, did you look at this? Um, is definitely helpful. So Glitterwell, anything, definitely follow them. I love their Instagram. Um, it's so fun. Do you guys have anything else you want thank to you. give a shout out? Yeah. Uh, no, I just think that uh, you know it's it's a different it's a different ball game to go luxury. I think it's worth mm -hmm. it, but it's um, just know your brands and be patient. I mean, that's that's the really the name of the game. Yeah, and I think it was yeah. very apparent in this um, chat that it is a, definitely a different strategy, um, and it's a strategy that can work, but you have to be willing to know that strategy and put that into your business strategy. You're not selling things quickly. Um, not all, I mean, sometimes, but not always. Like it's usually a longer game. You're putting more money yeah. in upfront. So thank everybody. Thank you guys for joining. Thank everybody in the chat for joining and all of your information as well. Um, if you like content like this, make sure to subscribe to my channel, hit the notifications. Uh, would it, smash the like button. I'm I'm learning the YouTube yo <laughs> logo or the YouTube lingo and it just feels so weird coming out of my mouth. Give me a thumbs up on your way out. Um, if you like content like this, if you guys are watching this in a recording and you have questions for me or anybody on the panel, definitely feel free to leave those down below. Also, if you're watching it in the recording and you want to drop your information in the comments, I am all about sharing the love and, um, shameless self promotion. So feel free to leave your information in the comments as well. Um, make sure to hit the notifications when you subscribe. I have a lot of lives. And then also if there is something that you think the community would like to hear and you want to come on a live and talk about, or if there's something that you would like me to have people on to talk about, I will hunt them down and find people to come on and talk about those topics. Um, so definitely leave those in the comments as well or send me a DM on Instagram. And then make sure to join me tomorrow for my live with Chris from A Daily Refinement. We are doing a year long mentorship meeting every Wednesday at 6.30 PM on my channel, talking about how to get me to a hundred, a thousand dollars net a week in working 20 hours or less. So there's lots of really good information that is coming out of those chats as well. So make sure to join me tomorrow at 6.30. Whew, I think I said it all. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys again for joining me and I hope everyone is staying safe and sane in whatever capacity is best for their family and have a good night. Thank you guys. Thanks, Thanks Sarah. Thank you so much. Thanks for having us. Bye.